This is a story of a guy I met in the woods, and a few friends of his. I can't guarantee anything as to its accuracy. I'm just going on what he told me to be true. Be friend and a couple buddies. Head out on the Highline Trail in Utah's Uintas Mountains for a week. Have enough cars in the group so as to be able to park one at each end of the trail greater than everybody is excited to be out in the mountains together. Not long before weird things to start happening. It starts out with things like hiking poles and backpacks send up at opposite sides of camp to where people left them. Everybody's boots are upside down in the morning. They hang their food bags on certain trees at night, but find them tied to certain other trees in the mornings. Most people brush this stuff off as animals, or someone in their group getting a midnight snack. Weirder and weirder shit starts happening. My friend wakes up to find muddy handprints all over the inside of his tent fly, in between the inner tent and the fly. As they're hiking, they lose the trail only to backtrack and find large, freshly cut branches and clever disguise laid over the actual trail. People are starting to think that they're being stalked. What really starts freaking people out is waking up to find their tents rearranged in their campsite. The stakes of the non-freestanding tents look like they're all undisturbed, but the tents are all in different places around camp. Nobody has any idea how their tents could have been all moved around, and in some cases apparently broken down and re-pitched, with none of them noticing or waking up. Next night, they decide to keep watch in three-hour shifts. Everyone is on edge. Watchmen get thick branches, tie knives to the ends, and arm themselves with bare mace. The first half of the night, nothing happens. Then it's my friend's turn to stand watch. He's got his camera because he figures the flash can illuminate wide areas if something comes close. It doesn't matter, though, because he falls asleep just before dawn, and nothing happens that night. Next morning, somebody asks him why he was taking pictures the last night. My friend freezes, slowly takes out his camera, checks the memory. There's pictures of everybody in the group sleeping, including himself. My friend is shitting his pants right now. They're 40 miles from their car, though technically only about 18 miles from the nearest trailhead if they were to hitchhike out. All pretty much guaranteed to spend at least one more night camping out. He decides to keep quiet about the pictures and they continue on their trip. Over the last few days of the trip, things get stranger and stranger. It doesn't matter who they post to nighttime lookout duty, the watchman always falls asleep. The next morning, everybody wakes up somehow on the ground outside of their tents. The following morning, they all wake up on in a strange meadow, out of sight of their campsite entirely. It's at this point that my friend decides to share what he saw on his camera two days earlier. They all huddle around his camera, and to their horror they discover new pictures, some of them taken very close to people's faces. The last picture is a picture of my friend's sleeping face, but there's a bone white hand cupping his chin. By following a creek a little ways upstream, they are able to find the trail, which someone recognizes as being not too far from their campsite. They only have 12 miles to go before they get to the trailhead, but it's early afternoon, and they're doubtful they can finish their trip that same day. Reaching their campsite, they find all of their gear shredded in pieces. Apparently, only one backpack was unharmed. They find where their food had been hung, scooped up as much as they could save from where it was scattered on the ground, somebody luckily finds the car keys, and they run the rest of the way back, getting lost several times, but reaching the trailhead before dark. When they finally get to the trailhead, everyone is too exhausted to make camp or do any driving, so all six of them just pile into the car, lock the doors, and fall asleep. A knock on their window wakes them up early the next morning. It's the police, and the cop wants to know what these people are doing in a closed air. As they try to explain the situation, the cop tells his own story. The entire entrance to the forest had been closed for days due to abnormal animal activity. My friend is getting suspicious why the police are handling the closure and not the forest strangers. He asks as much. Cop goes quiet and looks away. Very awkward moment, which is interrupted by one of my friend's hiking companions in the car. He notices that there are about a dozen other cars in the parking lot, but they all have flat tires. Everybody gets out of the car, and they realize that their own tires are flat. At this point, the cop comes clean and explains that there's actually a manhunt in the area but they're not sure what exactly they're dealing with. Lots of dead hikers turned up earlier in the week. My friend remembers the strange photos and gets out his camera to show the cop. The cop's face suddenly goes blank, and he hands back the camera. It's a photo that was taken inside the car the night before. Partially visible in the last photo, which is of my friend's sleeping face, 
like some kind of party photo where the taker holds the camera at arm's length to get himself in, is the right half of a pure white face with black holes for eyes and a mouth full of sharpened animal-like teeth.